राम राम कि जब चुनाव का समय निकट होता है तब आम तौर पर पूर्ण बजट नहीं रखा जाता है हम भी उसी परंपरा का निर्वाह करते हुए पूर्ण बजट नई सरकार बनने के बाद आपके समक्ष लेकर के आएंगे इस बार एक दिशा निर्देशक बातें लेकर के देश की वित्त मंत्री निर्मला जी हम सबके सामने कल अपना बजट पेश करने वाली है Shreya Vijay and you're watching Rhythm. On Thursday morning, government is going to unveil the new budget for 2024. While it's an interim budget, hopes and expectations are still running high across the nation. So today we have with us very special guest, Mr. Sharad Kohli, who is, who is a well-known economist and a TV debate expert, to shed light on what can a common man expect from this budget and how this budget is going to be significant. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. My pleasure. So, as this is a pre-election budget, so how do you see this budget is going to be special for us, and any realistic expectations from this budget? So, we all know that this is an interim budget. Uh, it's a vote on account because the parliament is going to complete its session in a couple of months from now, and there's going to be election declared. So, I have a lot of expectations, even though this is a this is a vote on account. Yeah. Uh, I personally feel that the focus of this budget will be on a few areas which I can highlight, and I am expecting the same also. Uh, one of them being uh, the four, you know, the G Y A and the Gyan frame, which uh, Prime Minister created uh, some time ago, and the four words of Gyan, which is G Y A M, stands for G stands for Garib, which is they're going to be focused on the poor. We all know about the Garib Kalyan Yojana, which is going on for 81 crore people for the last few years. It's going to continue for uh, for a few more years. Plus, we can expect some more schemes to be coming for poor. Then Y stands for youth. Which is the youth of the country? We all know that India is a very young country. Uh, about 65 percent of our population is below 35 years of age. Exactly. So there is something which is going to be for the youth, uh, whether it is relating to their education, whether it is relating to their skill development, or it is relating to creating more employment opportunities for, them, or it is regarding the startups. So something for the youth is what I am definitely expecting. Then A stands for Annadatta, which which is farmers. I think India, predominantly being an agriculture economy, you know, 60 to 70 percent of our population depends on agriculture. So I'm sure uh, there's something which is going to be there for farmers also. PM Kisan's uh, Samman scheme, which we all know is running, where every four months government has been directly transferring 2,000 rupees uh, to the account of small farmers. I think uh, I can expect consolidation of the scheme. This can probably the amount can grow more, or the frequency could be more. From existing six thousand per annum, I can see this reaching eight thousand or ten thousand, maybe even twelve thousand. Fingers crossed, uh, because the farmers farming community is one where small farmers they keep yielding losses. Uh, you know, agriculture in our country is not a very very profitable activity. So the government is committed to the farmers to make it profit. Able to make it more yielding for them. M stands for Nari, which is women. I'm sure there's going to be something for the women because uh, because uh, 23 percent of the women in our country contribute to the economic activity. The remaining 77 percent are either either little girls or old women, or they are mostly they are involved in household activities. Although. I don't consider household activities to be completely out of economic activity because exactly. if they don't do the if they, if they don't manage the household, yeah. the, the men folk cannot come out and earn. So True. they indirectly contribute. But when I say 23%, I mean women like you, uh, Shreya, who directly contribute to economic activity. That is who are in the business of earning money. So with uh, half of our population being women, I'm sure this government is very conscious of the fact that women of the country must contribute to both as well. These four focus areas, which is G Y A N, I I summarize it, which is uh, uh, a scheme for poor, youth, farmers, and women. And incidentally, the Prime Minister in one of his speeches earlier also said that I believe in only four castes. I don't believe in Brahman, Vaishya, Shudra, or Shatriya. For me, it's only these four castes: which is the youth, the farmers, the poor, and women. So I'm sure there's going to be focus on this. Apart from this, I am seeing a lot of allocation to come for railways, oh. because the way Vande Bharat uh, trains are being augmented, the number of trains being added at the speed, I think our railway infrastructure needs to be little more augmented. 
whether it is railway stations or whether it is facility for best passengers whether it is railway lines whether it is setting up of new railway lines so i do see something happening there also some kind of allocation coming for railways well apart from this the other area which i am uh, looking forward to is the digital india all right i i personally feel that the substantial part of our gdp boost which has come we are growing at 7% plus and we had the imf report coming last evening which said that uh, they have revised their estimates from 6.5% to 6.7% my own estimate says we are going to go beyond 7% so does rbi in its economic review which came day before yesterday it said that we are going to probably go, uh, grow uh, at 7% plus and we are going to reach uh, 5 trillion dollar in 2027 and 7 trillion in 2030 hmm. so with that uh, buoyant growth i am very sure that major part of the gdp is being contributed by digital india whether it is fintech whether it is digital india in uh, corporate governance whether it is digital india in in government's own operations and applications i think digital india is contributing majorly to india's growth so i feel a focus on digital india is going to remain undoubtedly apart from this i think the health uh, the allocation to health in our country right now is about 3.1% of gdp and i think covid has taught us a lot of lessons exactly. that we need to be we need to be better prepared for uh, health emergencies and to provide uh, uh, health services to the to the citizens of the country i can also expect an ayushman bharat 2.0 because ayushman bharat so far has been serving people a large number of people i can also expect something more happening on the health front and then education is something i think which which india badly needs upgradation a lot has been done on education but we can expect more on education uh, to happen beyond this i think um, a lot of people they want to ask about taxation that are we expecting something on taxation yes i do feel uh, you know government may not let this opportunity go Uh, for giving some kind of relief to the huge indian middle class the size of indian yes, middle class sir. is about 40, 49 crores to 50 crore people so i think they always look up to the finance minister and said the most most exciting part of the budget speech is when prime minister when the finance minister says that i'm going to announce now the tax uh, related announcement so as we see so last year also they reduced the tax slabs for individual taxpayers so can we see any such development this year too Yes, uh, we might see. Although this is an interim budget, and let's not forget, we're going to have two budgets this yeah. year. There's going to be one now, and probably when the new government is elected in the month of July, we might see another budget, a full-fledged budget coming, which will be more of a policy roadmap for the next five years. But in this budget, yes, I am expecting. You know, we saw that income tax had announced old regime and new regime uh, some time ago. Incidentally, the new regime uh, has still not become very popular with the taxpayers. Yeah. So I think there there might be attempt to make the new regime more popular. Uh, whereas uh, the the new pension system, the uh, might be brought into new regime. But new regime, as we all know, does not allow any deduction apart from standard deduction, which was brought in last year. Hmm. But uh, I might see NPS, uh, the new pension scheme, because that's a social security measure. coming into the new regime to make sure that new regime becomes more attractive i might also see some rationalization of the slabs you know easing of the slabs or some rationalization of slabs to give some relief to the taxpayers although i'm not expecting any major relief in the old tax regime because that's not one of the favorite any more but but some kind of new regime announcements are expected because uh, just before the elections and with an attempt to probably give some relief to the middle class exactly yeah. well all in all all in all i i i think the focus of the budget will continue to be growth hmm. so the government has been focusing on growth uh, as far as capex is concerned which yeah. is capital expenditure the infrastructure push well the the capex has been rising ever since this government came it has been 18 lakh crore plus now as far as capex is concerned hmm. but because this is an interim budget so i am not expecting anything magical uh, on the capex front we might see some minor announcement but because there is already a full fledged budget coming in july so the government may give a, a sideline to capex i mean there may be little bit but nothing major uh, which which we can probably expect in the in this particular budget likewise you know some major policy announcements may be kept on hold uh, for for the full fledged budget for budget, example yeah. for example a disinvestment uh, budget you know when government decides to disinvest from the public sector undertakings that may also not 
not be there in this budget. Maybe, but I'm I'm not expecting because there is already a full big budget coming. So, as you said, that uh, this budget is unlikely to have any major announcement. Do you think that uh, it will affect uh, investors in some ways? Well, I don't think so because invest what investors want is uh, any anybody who is investing in two kinds. One investment is you're investing in the securities and stock markets and government instruments and so and so. Hmm. The second investment comes by way of uh, by way of private investment, which we call it as uh, industrial investment, where people make invest in factories, expansion of capacities, and so and so. So I think any investor, for that matter, wants consistency, stability of the government, and stability. of the situation so i think uh, uh, i mean my political observation says that the, the current uh, ruling government is going to come back because i see a very fragmented uh, opposition at this point of time okay. well uh, i i hope i'm not wrong but for me it looks like a cake walk for the government to come back so so i think investors are quite uh, happy about this i mean because because they not because investors are pro bjp or anti bjp it's not a question of pro nd or nt nd but because they do feel that the current government is going to remain in power for another 5 years so i think that will uh, uh, that is going to make the investors mood better and we might see more investments coming in as there is another dimension of investment which is international investments such as the fdi mm-hmm. and the fpi i think they have already been going gaga about india because because fpi investment uh, has been consistently flowing into the country we saw about uh, 20 billion dollar coming last year yeah the total the total amount invested in the stock markets at this point of time stands at about 700 billion dollar plus you know which is which is a lot of money uh, the fdi the foreign direct investment is also coming in because china is no more a favorite destination for the world uh, the factories are moving from china to india, india they're looking yeah. at other 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 uh, directions so india is a very promising destination for them and i'm sure the government of india by way of ease of doing in business and reforming various um, aspects of economy have made india as a as a reasonably attractive destination there's a lot more to be done i won't say that the job is over but then i'm sure we're moving in the right direction and uh, we might see more and more foreign direct investment and i think all foreigners anybody for that matter will when you want to invest money somewhere you want to see consistency stability and security of your your investment which i think the country is at this point of time very well provided so i do see a very buoyant economy mm. the only challenge i feel uh, is at the international level where i feel that the geopolitical tensions are building up around the world west asia is burning we yeah. see the tensions in red sea we see we see gaza and israel conflict still on uh, in the eastern europe we see russia and ukraine problem is still going on the thing going on it's been almost 2 years now uh north korea south korea tensions are there iran and american tensions are there uh china taiwan tensions are there so i think these geopolitical challenges are there government has a fiscal deficit target of 5.9% of gdp this year so do you think government will be able to meet that target i think so because uh, the tax collections have been very very good we saw direct tax collections rising by 20% which is which is which is very nice i mean the number of uh tax returns filed were 8 crore plus which is an all time record on the indirect tax fund gst we are seeing the average collection has moved from uh, you know you know average of 90000 crores a few years ago it is now 150000 crore plus so yeah. i mean 160000 crore 150000 crores has become the new normal for uh, gst in a month so i think the tax collections are buoyant apart from this uh, government spending has been there so the government has been borrowing the interest outflows are there but i i do see the fiscal consolidation there is something called frbf the fiscal responsibility and budget management act which i think after covid uh well during before covid uh, the fiscal deficit target was about 3% but after covid across the world i think these targets have been revised now they are no more 3% so i think anything below 6% for me is a very catchy target and which government should uh, strive to achieve although the infrastructure spending promised by the government may let it spend a little more where we might see some diversion from the fiscal deficit target but so far so good if the tax collections remain the way they are now hmm. i do not see any divergence from the target of fiscal deficit all right sir thank you so much for giving update and sharing your expectations from the budget and thank you so much for joining us